Hi friends, in this video we are going to talk about how to implement a Flask server and a Python client that uses OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow for protecting the Flask API endpoint. That means we are securing a Flask API endpoint using the OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow. We will also create a Python client that actually takes token from the OAuth server and gives the token to the resource server and gets the data. So we will create a Python script that will act as a client application. Alright, if you don't know what OAuth 2.0 is, what OAuth 2.0 client credentials workflow is or how the client credentials workflow works, I've already created videos on that and I will leave the link of those videos in the description. And I highly recommend you to watch my previous video and blog post where I've explained how OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow works. I've already shown the demo with key cloak, but here in this example, I did the request manually to get the tokens and I've also validated the token manually using this jwd.io. So we're going to do this whole manual thing in Python in this video. And in that video, I've also talked about the well-known configuration page. So I highly recommend you to watch that video first if you don't know about OAuth 2.0 client credential flow. All right, let's try to implement the server and the client. So before just starting, let's try to see the workflow. The client application or the Python script in our case will actually request a token from the OAuth server in our case, we are using Keycloak as the OAuth server and the Python script will attach the token in the request authorization header and send the request to the API server or the resource server and that resource server will validate the token, authorize the client and if everything is okay, then it will give a successful result to the client application. So you have three actors, which is the client application or the Python script, the API server or the resource server or the Flask server in our case and the STS or secure token service or the OAuth server or the key cloak server in our example. So first set up the key cloak server now because it's what that issues tokens to the client application and it's what that gives the public key to the resource server for validating the token. So first you have to set up the OAuth server, right? So I've already made a video on setting up easily key cloak in a Windows machine. So if you don't know how to set up key cloak in Windows, please watch that video. It's very easy actually. So for now, I already downloaded Keycloak and let's try to run it. It's really simple. I'm going to open a command prompt in this folder. And here I'm going to go to the bin folder and then I'm going to write kc.bat and then I'm going to write start dev. And let's try to start the server in development mode. All right, the Keycloak OAuth server is now running. Let's try to open it in the browser. I'm going to go to localhost 8080 because Keycloak server by default runs on 8080 port. And I'm going to the admin console and it's asking for login. I have created a user in the previous video. The username is key underscore admin and I also set the password. So let's try to sign in now. Here for the client to ask the token, it should be registered in the STS or the OAuth server. So I've already registered my client in a realm called my org in the previous video. So I have already created another realm other than master because it's a good practice not to create your clients in the master realm so create another realm in my case the realm is my org and here i have the clients i have already created a client called test api client and the thing you need to take care here is mainly this setting in the capability config you have to keep the client authentication on and tick only the service account role so that the flow of authorizing the client would be the client credentials over 2.0 flow and here in the credentials tab i can see the client secret and the client ID and the client secret is required for getting the token from the STS or the OAuth server. And here in the client scopes, I have kept a scope called test API access. So first you have to create the scope here in the client scopes. You can see I have created a scope called test API access. The name is test API access and you don't need to do any additional settings. And let's go to the clients again. In the test API client, in the client scopes, I have added this scope called test API access and here you can see the scope is optional that means if you want the access token to contain this scope you have to explicitly ask for it so that's it we have created a test API client or the OAuth client in our OAuth server and for the flask server to actually verify the JWT or the access token issued by the OAuth server it needs to get the public key from the OAuth server right so for that let's go to the realm settings and here you can see the OpenID endpoint configuration and in this page you go to the JWKS URL and here you can see the certificates and 
this certificate would be required for verifying the JWT signature sent by the client to the resource server. So using this JWKS URL, you can actually access the public keys of the OAuth server for verifying the JWT. So that's it guys, we got our client, client scope created and we know where the public keys of the OAuth server are present. So now we can go ahead and create the resource server and the Python client that actually asks data from the resource server with OAuth 2.0 client credential authorization. So first let's create the resource server and in this demo we are going to create a flask server as a resource server. So I'm going to take a blank folder and I'm going to open it with VS code and let's try to create a server and let me name it server.py. Alright this is our flask application. This is a really simple flask application. I've created an instance of a flask application and I'm running it at localhost port 5000 and these are my flask routes. So each function acts as a flask route. For now, I did not add authorization to any of the route, but we are going to do it subsequently, right? All right. So this is the first endpoint, which is public and it is accessible through the URL API slash public. So if you're going to write localhost port 1500 API slash public, then you need to get a message called no need of authorization to see this. And similarly, if you go to an endpoint called API slash private, you have to see this message. And if you go to an API endpoint called api slash private scope you need to see this message so let's try to run this server and see whether it works or not all right my server is running let's go to the url localhost colon 1500 slash api slash public and here you can see no need of authorization to see this this is a json you can see the raw data message no need of authorization to see this if you go to api slash private you can see i've got a json message authorization is required to see this and if i go to url localhost port 1500 slash api slash private scope you have to see a JSON authorization with a scope named test API access is required to see this. So all my three endpoints are actually working. All right, let's try to authorize these two endpoints, which is private and private scoped. And as the message suggests, the request should be just authorized to see this endpoint. But here the request should be authorized and it should have a scope called test API access to actually see this otherwise it should be not authorized or it should be given a 401 unauthorized access message so this is how actually we're going to do it so there is already a ready-made and robust implementation of adding a decorator to a flask endpoint that authorizes the request with oauth 2.0 client credentials for that we need to install the auth lib python module so for that you just open the command prompt and write python minus m pip install Authlib. So Authlib is this awesome Python module which actually gives you the implementation of OAuth 2.0 client credential validator. So this required auth variable which you're seeing here is actually going to be a decorator on the route. So on this route I can just write at require auth and just give the scopes here. But here I don't want any scope as mandatory so I'm gonna write none. So that means the request should have an authorization header and in that authorization header there should be a bearer token that is an access token and that access token should be valid and that's enough for authorizing this endpoint i don't need any scopes so this flash decorator can be created just by instantiating a resource protector class and this is obtained from this authlib integrations flask over to resource protector you need to register a token validator also so first you have to create a token validator and here is where the logic goes in and it is also really simple we just configure the validator and it will do the jwt validation behind the scenes for you because it's inheriting from jwt bearer token validator so i have modified this as per my requirement i need the json url for getting the certificates so i'm telling the issuer is localhost 8080 slash realm slash my org in the realm settings I'm going to this endpoint configuration and going to JWKS URI and this is the issuer localhost 8080 slash realm slash myorg and protocol slash openid connect slash certs will be the certificates obtaining endpoint. So I have written issuer slash protocol openid connect slash certs. So this is going to be the JSON URL where I will get the JSON of the public keys. And then I'm fetching the public key by doing a simple get request using this JSON URL of the public key. And once I get the public key, I don't need to do anything because there is already a JSON bearer token validator implementation of Authlib. Just supply the public key to it and it can do the validation. And I also overwritten the claim options 
and this claim options is the dictionary where you specify which claim of the JWT is essential and what should be the value and so on. So I just said I need only two claims which is the expiry claim and the issuer claim and the value of the issuer claim should be this. So this way using the authlips JWT bearer token validator you don't need to do the validation code it's actually implemented robustly and reliably by the authlib module you just supply the configuration to it and the configuration i have given is the public key and the conditions that the jwt should have an expiration time and the issuer so after creating the decorator using the resource protector and registering the validator my decorator is ready and just write decorator over your method something like this so since this is the public endpoint i just want to remove this this is a private endpoint right so i need to add the decorator so i'm gonna write at require auth and since i don't need a specific scope required for this endpoint i can just write none because you give the scope list here and here in this api endpoint i'll write at the rate require auth decorator and here you can supply a list of scope or a single scope so i just want a scope called test api access to be present in the jwt so as told that check for this scope and authorize only if this scope is present in the JWT scopes and that's all just by writing a single line I have added client credentials authorization to the flask API endpoint isn't that powerful you don't need to change your code just create the decorator and add the decorator over the flask route and it will act as a middleware to authorize your request so if the request is authorized it will be passed on to the API endpoint handling function if the request is not authorized then you'll get a http 401 unauthorized error all right thanks to authlips resource protector and jwt bearer token validator with very less lines of code we are able to implement client credentials over to flow by using a decorator now let's test our server so first let's try to run our server actually and hey the server is running without any errors but now let's try to send a request to the server and see how the response looks like so let's try to run the server again and let's go to this public api url so i'm going to say localhost 1500 api public no need of authorization to see this so i'm going to change this to private and here you can see error missing authorization missing authorization in headers the same should be valid for private scoped so how can it test the functionality whether the authorization is working correctly you can either use tools like postman or vs code's rest client extension to actually do the post request manually but hey we have created a flask server let's try to create a flask client also so let's try to create a new file let's name it client.py and what this client will do is get the token from the OAuth server supply the token in the request authorization header to the resource server and get the response so this is the well-known page of our OAuth server and in order to get the token you need to go to the token endpoint and this is the token endpoint url so let's copy this so i'm going to write token url equal to this and you know we need to give the oauth server the client id and client secret to get the token in exchange right so let's try to write the client id and client secret in variables of our python code so this is the client id this is the client secret you can see that in our key cloak server in the client section go to required client which is the test api client and here the id is test api client and the credentials can be seen here just copy these credentials and paste it here so i got the client id and client secret and i need to get the token right so i have to do a http post request and get the token so in order to easily do the http post request i'm going to use a library called request so i'm going to write import requests so if you don't have request module installed in your python environment it's really simple you go to the command line and write python minus m pip install requests then you'll get the request module installed in your python environment so let's try to request for the token by doing a post request so i'm going to write request dot post and the url will be the token url and we're going to give the post body right so i'm going to write data equal to uh, json and that json will have the grant type which is client credentials that's a fixed thing because we are using the or 2.0 clients credentials flow and the client id and the client secret and we need to give a header for content type so i'm going to write headers equal to and this is going to be a dictionary again and the dictionary will be content type application xww form url encoded our post request is ready so let's take the response into a variable so access token response equal to request dot post so if the response is okay then we can get the token from the response 
So I'm going to just write if access token response dot okay or if it is not okay, we have to quit the program, right? So I'm gonna write if not access token response okay. I can write server token response did not return with the status of okay. Okay means HTTP status code 200. If we get a successful response, the response would be a JSON actually. So let's try to read the JSON. So I'm gonna write token response dot JSON and let's store it into a variable called access token response JSON and that JSON will have the access token in a key called access token. So let's try to extract the access token by using the access token key from the JSON. So this is going to be my access token. So you can also check if this key is present in the JSON. So you can write if not access token is present in the JSON, you can say that JSON is not as desired and quit the program. All right, now we got our access token from the OAuth server. Now I can do the request to my resource server to this Flask API endpoint API slash private. So this is going to be my API URL, the URL of this Flask endpoint. So let's try to do a GET request. So further, you want to write request dot get, and the URL would be the API URL. But you need to add an authorization header, right? So I'm going to write headers equal to a dictionary and here you need to add the authorization header so the authorization header format is very simple just append the access token after bearer space so write bearer space the access token so that's going to be the value of the authorization header and since you want the response to be json you got to write content type as application slash json so the server knows that it needs to respond in json because actually our api endpoints return json so I want to write the content type that I want is JSON. So after you make the request, let's try to store the response in a variable. So let's try to name the variable as API response. So API response equal to request dot get. And let's try to see if we got the response okay or not. So I'm gonna write if not API response dot okay. That means I'm checking if the status code is 200 okay or not. And if not, I'm gonna say okay response is not received so i am quitting this program if we get an okay response that means the server responded successfully and let's try to print what the response was i'm gonna write api response dot json and at the end i'm gonna write execution complete so that's it we have got the token attached the token to the request and ask data from the api server so let's try to revise what we did we actually requested for the access token by doing a post request to the OAuth server. So this is the token URL from which I can get the token from the OAuth server. After getting the response, I'm parsing the response as JSON and extracting the access token from the key called access token of the response JSON. And once I got the access token, I'm doing a GET request to the API, which is actually protected by client credentials flow. And if everything goes right, you should get the JSON. All right, let's try to test now. Our Keycloak server is running. Let's try to run our server. So now the API server is running and now let's run this client. So I'm gonna create a new command prompt here and I'm gonna write python client.py and here I got authorization is required to see this and execution complete. So since I've added the token, I've got this successful response from the server. Just for testing, let's try to omit the token i have commented this just i'm giving the content type and let's try to run this program again i should get an error okay response not received from the resource api call because i did not give the authorization header with the access token so let's try to keep it again you know i did not ask additionally for the test api access scope so test api access scope will not be present in the access token received by me and that's why this private scope endpoint should not be successfully authorized so let's try to test that so instead of calling the private i'm going to call private scoped endpoint and i'm not asking for the test api scope explicitly in this token request so i should not get the scope and i should not be authorized now so let's try to save this client.py and run this again and you can see even i kept the authorization header i did not get an okay response so for that i need to exclusively ask for the scope while getting the token so in the token request, I'm going to add another data of the post body called scope. And here you need to give a space separated list of scopes. So for me, I need only one scope, which is the test API access. So I'm requesting for the scope. So in the response, that scope should be present. And let's try to run this again. Now I should not get an error like this. Let's try to run this. And here you can see authorization with scope named test API access is required to see this. I did not get an error because I have explicitly asked for this scope because this scope in this client was optional. That means you have to ask for this scope explicitly 
while requesting the access token so that's it guys we have successfully implemented the server and the client in python that actually act as a OAuth 2.0 client credentials resource server and a client all right the next topic which i'm going to talk about is implementing the decorator by yourself from scratch using the pyjwt python module you know in our implementation we have used authlips decorator called the resource protector and i highly recommend you to use this implementation only because you don't need to write the security related code it's already created and well maintained in the authlip python module but if you have some special cases and you want to implement the flask authorization decorator yourself you can actually do that so let's try to create a new file for the decorator so i'm going to write auth decorator.py and here i'm going to create a factory function which actually returns a decorator so here you need to give the issuer to it which is this url the realm url localhost 8080 slash realm slash my org and what it does in the decorator function is it will extract the access token from the authorization header so what we did here was request.headers.get authorization and getting it into a variable called access token and if i don't get an access token i am aborting it with 401 that means i am telling this is unauthorized request and if i get the access token before verifying i need to know what algorithm and the public key right so algorithm can be actually extracted from the header right so i am getting the header using jwt.unverified header of the access token so in that header you need two attributes to be extracted from them which is the algorithm and the key id because in the OAuth server in the jwks uri you have multiple keys and you need to consider the key with the key id given in the jwt header so that's why i am extracting the key id which is required and the public keys url is basically issuer slash protocol open id connect slash search here you can see issuer slash protocol slash open id connect slash search so i am getting all public keys and retrieving the required public key using the key id present in the header and then i am validating the jwt payload by decoding it and supplying the public key and the algorithm and if the decorator is supplied with scopes I will pass the required scopes based upon it's a string or a list of strings and then I will verify if the scopes are present in the JWT payload. If they are not present then I will abort the request with HTTP 401 which is unauthorized and if everything is passed then I will give the control to the endpoint. So basically we have implemented the JWT validation ourselves using a function like this. So in our server, we can import the validator. So I'm gonna write from auth decorator import required clients credentials decorator factory. So here instead of writing the required auth equal to resource protector, I'm gonna write required auth equal to required client credentials decorator factory and you need to be the issuer, right? So issuer is this URL and that's it. I have derived the decorator from my factory which I have created from scratch using the PyJWT library. And this PyJWT library can be installed very easily using python minus m pip install pyjwt of crypto. So by using this command you can install the pyjwt module and after the module is installed you can use this import jwt and try to decode the jwt using this function provided by pyjwt. So this is one more way you can implement the decorator yourself for validating the jwt but I don't recommend this because there is already a robust implementation of JWT bearer token validator by Authlib. So that's it guys. We have created a server and a client for OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow. You can see I have created a blog post on implementing the server and client for OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow. I have given the source code notes so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. I have also given the references to the official documentation so that you can do further reading. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.